Thanks everyone for joining. Uh, we're going to talk about intelligent automation orchestration, right? Uh, and uh, so we have got um, a couple of gentlemen from Turbotic and I'll introduce them as we get going. So firstly, uh, this uh, webinar is brought to you by Bot Nirvana. Uh, we are a community of automation practitioners who support each other. Uh, and help each other in this uh, intelligent automation journey. So a lot of hype out there. And so we're just making sense of it together. Uh, we've had people like Alex in the, in, in, in the uh, community sessions. So it's, it's really fun. Uh, so yeah, if you guys want to join, our next cohort is uh, starting end of September. And uh, I'm actually announcing this for the first time in this, in this meeting. So, you know, and I plan to announce it soon on LinkedIn and all that, but uh, you know, we, we have some discounts for the early joiners. So if you go to botnirvana.org, uh, there is a form if you want to request to join. Uh, so with that, let's get started uh, with today's uh, session. The agenda uh, is one, I, I'll make some opening remarks in terms of what's the trend and what we're seeing with this particular piece of the market, uh, which uh, I think Gartner calls this process orchestration. Uh, Zeno is calling it as orchestration. So it, it's 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 an emerging market, and we'll talk about it. And then I'll hand it over to Alex, where he'll talk about the uh, optimization concepts with intelligent automation. And that's some interesting slides I've seen that. And Goran will do the most exciting part, right? He'll demo the Houston 2.0 Turbotic, and that will be amazing. So I'm also looking forward to that. We'll follow it up with a Q&A. So hold your questions till the end um, and you put it in the chat too. And then we'll take it up towards the end. We have a good 15, 20 minutes for the questions. So, uh, you know, we're looking forward to all your questions. Um, and then we'll have uh, closing remarks. Okay. So today uh, we have Alex from Turbotic. He's the chief strategy officer at Turbotic. Uh, one of the early members of the team, if not the co-founder. Uh, and uh, I also have Goran, who is a CTO. So, you know, the key members of the Turbotic team are here to talk about the Turbotic platform and, you know, how you can use it for your optimization needs. Um, so I just quick remark on where uh, this is, where this market is, right? Uh, so, uh, it's as I said, you know, it's 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 about orchestration, and so let's talk about orchestration a bit, right? So when this whole journey of about intelligent automation started, it started with RPA, as we all know, and then uh, and you know I also started with RPA, and so there are three components of RPA, which is pretty exciting. Uh, one is the GUI part, uh, which is a screen, and it interacts with the screen. Very exciting for people to see, and that's probably the most visible thing, uh, which is probably not very you know, exciting to technical folks. <laughs> uh, but, you know, uh, the second part is the bot aspect of it, which is that, you know, there's a runtime, you can, it, it's, we've been doing automation for long, but, you know, it's introduced a concept for bot called bots, and it's a runtime, uh, you know, executing your actions. And the third aspect, and I think which is the most important aspect is the orchestration. So uh, you can orchestrate these bots to, uh, carry out your actions, uh, you know, in, in a symphony. And that's very important, right? Like uh, in in life, music, math is important. So that whole orchestra or orchestration of these bots is uh, the important aspect of uh, automation. And if you look at it, UiPath, the most costly license for UiPath is uh, their orchestrator. And in fact, uh, players like Robocorp only charge for the orchestration. So, you know, that is, that's that, that important for it. So now, the question is the orchestration. How do you do this orchestration as this ecosystem grows, right? Uh, so all this uh, RPA players would want you to use their orchestration and be within their ecosystem, but there's more and more uh, uh, capabilities coming in into the market, right? Uh, with more and more AI capabilities coming in as well as multiple other uh, technologies, whether it is analytics, uh, you know, whether it's automation, whether it's BPM, there's multiple uh, technologies and things coming up. So how do we do this end to end orchestration? So that's where this, uh, you know, players like Turbotic uh, or 
you know, orchestrators like Turbotic can play a great role uh, because they bring in all the, they can orchestrate across the ecosystem. So if you are like in UiPath, you're only orchestrating UiPath, right? But here you can orchestrate across uh, different RPA technologies. Here, as Gartner is saying, you know, whether it's an NLP with an advanced assistance, like a chatbot or API, you can uh, orchestrate across. Now, this is whole debate uh, about, yeah, whether should I stick to one ecosystem or should I have multiple tools? Uh, to me, and as like Gartner says below, you know, you it's best to have a best of breed ecosystem because at some point you need to have a, uh, boundary and so hyper automation or that is a concept you know but you know I, I think it's 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 not a good idea to chase hyper automation or whatever you call that mm, because you know it, it's 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 an evolving thing and you know today um, I heard one more term uber automation people are just making fun of the the terms that's coming in so but um, you know I think focus should be more on what are your business objectives and look at what tools will work best for you so, but from a Gartner perspective, this particular orchestration, which they call as process orchestration, is one of the big trends coming up in the next couple of years. Uh, and it's got, got fairly good impact. So today we'll talk about process orchestration uh, with Turbotic, right? So Turbotic does that uh, in a, a great way. So they, they, they call it uh, enabling uh, an intelligent enterprise. Uh, um, uh, so, you know, uh, from a Turbotic perspective, uh, perspective, uh, we will see how you can use Turbotic uh, to do uh, optimization of automations that you're bringing in uh, using their platform. So we have Alex who will be talking about uh, how you can optimize your automation and its impact on your intelligent automation journey. And then he will hand over to Goran for the demo. So over to you, Alex, let me make you co-host. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Nandan. Great to be here. So I'll, I'll go in and share then, right? Yeah, go ahead and share. Let me stop sharing. And thanks everyone for joining. I know many of you guys joined as I spoke. Uh, thank you for joining. Okay, here we go. So, uh, and I can just recommend uh, Bot Nirvana, of course. I've been been part of that a few times. Great discussions with the uh, uh, with the community. Um, but let me jump into this topic <clears throat> about <clears throat> automation optimization. And I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the concept of automation optimization, both from a like a robotic perspective, uh, as we're trying to basically build a platform for this, of course, but also based on, uh, on my own experience of running a large scale intelligent automation initiative from, from 2016 to 2021 in, at Ericsson, where we basically started with a few guys doing RPA and ended up with 500 people doing intelligent automation across this open ecosystem of platforms like, like Nandan talked about with, uh, with the multiple different platforms and hundreds of projects and you know hundreds, thousands of, of live uh, live solutions and this was uh, this was very very complex to manage it was quite costly to uh, to manage and we really felt that there was something that was lacking in the in the market the glue that could could keep this together so that is why we we uh, decided to start uh, turbotic and and try to build this product to 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 bring this to market because we thought we had a gap in the market uh, anyway i'll talk a little bit about uh, uh, why are you doing this why are you even looking at this and what do you want to uh, achieve and what can you uh, potentially achieve by driving intelligent automation? And I think most organizations that are driving intelligent automation, they want to scale, they want to succeed, right? And, and then different companies might uh, define successes in different ways. But th this is you know, a few things that I see are common for organizations that are really uh, scaling and one is that they're really looking at not like piecemeal activities they're more looking at end-to-end -end business flows which drives actual actual transformation and change in a, in an organization and when doing that they usually look at how can they have a significant impact and that might not usually only on the cost dimension but looking a little bit broader how can we 
even use this to drive new revenue streams to create new uh, offerings for our customers. How can we increase customer satisfaction, for instance? Uh, and then another thing is that many companies, they start in one function and then they can't scale there because they only have sponsors in one function or a few functions. But the ones that really scale, they, uh, I think they are able to engage most parts of the business or, or maybe even all parts of the business to get this um, implemented everywhere, basically. Uh, and in order to do that, we think you need, you need both the bottom-up um, bottom drive so that few people feel uh, uh, passionate about this and, uh, and not feel afraid of, uh, of the consequences of automation, but you also need a top-down push and the investments coming. So, so you really engage large parts of the, of the company. And when you do all of this, you will most likely have hundreds or even have thousands of different solutions uh, that are running, which is costly, which is complex to manage. And you will most likely have multiple different platforms too, because you find out that having the best of breed and solving a wider set of use cases often requires a wider set of uh, technologies. Uh, so this is things that we, we experienced and what, what we see in other parts. And then we're going to look at what, what can you uh, spend on when you are um, when you're heading intelligent automation in in a company, we see that there are five main areas that you can that you can focus on. One is uh, having a good management team, uh, having a good vision or strategy in place. And another one is really to engage the, the, the business, engage the stakeholders, and drive pipeline. And the third area is delivering these projects. Um, so actually building bots or building solutions. The fourth one is the operations which tend to increase the larger uh, your implementation is. And the, uh, the fifth investment area is when you uh, invest in new capabilities. That might be new technology or it might be upskilling your people to, uh, to be able to manage a wider set of technologies. Uh, so, to say, so these are five areas I think you can, it's good to think of when, when uh, looking at what companies actually spend on. And if you look at at a, at a case, and this can obviously differ between different uh, companies, but the spend breakdown could potentially look like something like this, um, which I don't think is very uncommon. If, and if you look at this one, you see that the vast majority of the spend here, almost close to 80% is spent on either building new stuff or operating the old stuff, which is a lot, right? And both of these, I think they are not, fairly, they are not very strategic. Um, of course, you need to build a lot of new solutions if you're going to scale. But really, what is needed to scale, then you need to engage the stakeholders. You need to have a really good relation with the stakeholders uh, on a high level, on executive level, but also down further down in the, uh, in the hierarchy. And you need to continuously build a pipeline. So that is also important to spend on, on that one. And you also need to have a good vision, a good management so you can, so you can run this and to continuously spend on you know, building new innovation, building new capabilities. But if you, your reality looks like this, it's, it's quite hard to, to spend on this. And um, of course, you can put, maybe you can get more and more budget for every year, but, but if not, well, uh, then you have a bit of a problem because then we see that then this part, operations will just increase every year and it will eat up the, the, the funding that is available to uh, to scale and to achieve hyper automation or intelligent automation at scale. You can obviously break this down in different aspects here. On operations, for instance, you have uh, running, the, running the bots, so to say, application operations, you have the license spend, you have the infra cost, and you have the uh, just you know, keeping the platforms uh, up and running, uh, for instance. Uh, but when you start to look at optimization, you know, when, where should you look at optimizing? Obviously, well, we can start with this. Where should you invest if you really want to scale? And my view is that if you want to scale and if you want to succeed, you need to ensure that you put your investments in the more strategic areas to really invest, you know, to transform the business, to engage the stakeholders as good as possible, to ensure that the center of excellence or the automation team or whatever it's called uh, is very much represented at top uh, in the company and is working with the most important strategic programs uh, to drive change. Uh, you also need to invest in having the right management. And I, I was talking to one of the 
vendors today and they say, you know, what, what differs the successful companies from the unsuccessful companies in intelligent automation, the number one factor that is who is the head of this automation organization. You really need to invest in this uh, position, have it on the right level and have the right team to, to drive this. And then the, uh, the third one, which I think is important is to be able to invest in new capabilities, new platforms to unlock new opportunities and also to improve your current platforms. And in order to do that, it's, it's quite clear where do you need to optimize? You should optimize where you have the bigger cost items, of course. So imagine if you can go in and reduce cost of operations with 40%. Imagine if you can take down the cost of uh, delivery and the lead time of delivery. Well, you get much more happy stakeholders because they get their stuff faster and they get it to a lower cost. They get better business cases for each, and, uh, each solution and they will do more and more solutions. So it's quite important when you drive this at scale that you continuously optimize uh, the way you operate and take down the cost so that you're able to invest in the new areas. <clears throat> and if you do that, then you could, all of a sudden, you could look at this reality instead. Imagine having the ability to invest 25% uh, of, of the whole budget, for all the spend in building new pipeline. Then you have this uh, continuous inflow of new capabilities. Imagine that you can invest so much on building new capabilities and looking at new platforms, do innovation projects. And maybe you can even start to provide some savings. After a while, I believe in most cases, the CIOs or the CFOs will start to demand savings from, from everything that is legacy. So the question then is, you know, how, how do you do that? Uh, and here is where we started to think of, you know, can we create something that helps the companies to do this? But, but first, I think there are some fundamentals that are important. I talked about, and I think having the right leadership, having the right uh, transformation approach with the business and building the right capabilities with the right people and the right technology. Those are fundamental, all three of them. But if you have that, or if you have parts of that, it's very important to look at enablers then. So here we believe automation optimization comes in as a huge enabler for uh, successfully scaling intelligent automation. So that is, from our perspective, is about looking at the life cycle. So how do you do this whole life cycle faster and better and cheaper uh, than before? That is automation optimization. We talk about operations, we talk about build, but we also talk about discovery. How do you digitize your whole discovery? And how do you find ideas from the business in a smarter way? And one thing that many companies are um, having a hard time with, how do you track the value in a better way? And how do you showcase this to the executives so that you can get more money, so you can get more investments, showcasing the, the value that, is, uh, that you have done? Uh, so with that, I wanted to introduce this, uh, this platform, the, the automation optimization platform, uh, Turbotic. Uh, Goran will run through a demo. We just did a new release this, uh, this week, the 2.0 release. But if I take this on a high level, uh, it's basically a digital representation of an end-to-end -end life cycle of uh, intelligent automation. <clears throat> There's five modules. They're almost like pro uh, products by themselves, but they are stitched together. So they work together. Or, but you can also use them one by one. The first one is... Uh, how do you generate more ideas from the business? How do you democratize idea generation? How do you find one way for anybody in the business to, to submit an idea and get that qualified? Second layer is then how do you uh, take that idea and uh, analyze the opportunity? It means you know, mapping processes, building business cases, collecting a lot of data on volumes and other things. And do that in a digitized fashion. The third one is, as you saw, a lot of the spend is on build, generally. It's costly to build these solutions. So how do you do that in a standardized way, driving down uh, the cost and the timeline of building solutions with different type of, uh, kind of features? Uh, then the, la the next one is when you go live, when you deploy, you are in operations, you want to meet your SLAs and you would want to do it at, at, at as low cost and, and low complexity as, as possible. So. So here, I think Goran will focus a little bit more on the demo where we have a lot of new uh, releases coming up. And the fifth one is then, how do you take the data of all of this, of the business cases, of the live solutions, of the projects, 
and visualize that in, in uh, dashboards that gives insight to any stakeholder, depending on what, what kind of role that stakeholder has. So that is the kind of foundation of the product. And then there's integrations to different vendors. So basically, you can operate all of these vendors in, uh, in one place. Um, and you can do a lot of things on top of them. And then the last one is the AI module, where we look at the data across the flow and look at what are the use cases where we can provide intelligence into the system to optimize the whole end-to-end -end flow. And very logical, there's a lot of stuff here. Predictive, preventive maintenance, error classification, etc. Uh, so that's the product. But with that, I'll leave over to, to Goran to run through a quick demo. After that, I'll go back to talk a little bit more about parts of, uh, of operations. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. And uh, thank you, Nandan, for hosting this uh, webinar. Uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, I will yeah, now take on the sharing. Great to have you on, Goran. And look thank forward you. to the demo. Yes, just let me know if uh, I can see you. It. See myself. Okay, great. Let me just lower this one down. Yeah. So, first of all, welcome to Turbotic Platform, right? So this is uh, the platform that Turbotic has uh, has built, uh, and uh, yeah, I will do a, a quick walkthrough through the platform, uh, so uh, we can leave some uh, some time for for questions. So uh, as Alex pointed out, the platform is built on top of five modules, uh, idea, discovery, build, control, and value. And these models are, are uh, set in, in a way that uh, they're following kind of the intelligent uh, 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 project uh, life cycle. So from the very beginning up to the actual uh, value generation and operating uh, the solutions. But uh, uh, starting first uh, from the idea, why we need uh, why we need uh, this module and uh, why uh, ideas are important. So most of the automations or automation projects today are uh, in a way doomed to failure if uh, you start uh, without a vision, right? Usually you start quite optimistic, but then uh, after your uh, first uh, several automations, then you are uh, you, you are done. Uh, you don't have any more uh, in your pipeline anything uh, new things uh, to build. Uh, so Basically, you cannot uh, grow uh, your product anymore. So for that, uh, we have uh, built uh, the idea module, which is uh, basically democratizing the generation of idea and uh, helping you in, uh, in in keeping a healthy pipeline uh, throughout uh, uh, throughout the years. Uh, so not only like uh, top down uh, members can dictate what uh, what is uh, the, to be done, but also involve the people bottom up where the actual, the people that work with the problem, right? So uh, this module is a one, uh, one time of click uh, and uh, users spent uh, less than a few minutes to generate ideas and uh, the module is basically backed up by a, a, a machine learning component that will help uh, additionally to speed up uh, the idea uh, progress to uh, actual uh, project by, uh, by providing recommendations, right? So it, uh, it can recommend uh, if uh, uh, some solution or some idea is uh, more feasible, less feasible than another, and uh, what type of likely solution is there. Uh, so the whole purpose of this module is uh, uh, to help you uh, create your pipeline. Then uh, then we move uh, to, the, to the next module, which is uh, uh, the discovery. Uh, and uh, just I need to move this screen on top. Just covering my. <laughs> okay, now no, it's, it's, it's done. Okay, so the next module is uh, the discovery. So in the discovery is uh, uh, where, as Alec pointed out, the project are spending most uh, most of the time uh, and the money. So basically. Uh, deep diving, analyzing uh, the, the ideas, trying to understand uh, the uh, basically the, the business um, uh, value out of uh, a specific idea. 
so uh, for that, we have uh, inbuilt this module that uh, helps to standardize, first of all, uh, the way of doing discoveries throughout the company. Uh, also, uh, make sure that you are compliant uh, as, as you go. You have uh, all the information centralized in one place and easy to find. Uh, and you can follow your, your uh, governance from end to end with approval flows, with uh, uh, whatever is, is needed. So it's structured uh, in, in several sections. Each section has its own uh, purpose and, um, uh, uh, and uh, it, uh, it basically follows the flow from opportunity analyzing uh, review and approval. Uh, also, uh, as part of the, of the discovery, we support with the automation of the business case. So basically, uh, users uh, can uh, input uh, some of the some of the uh, uh, values as uh, as they go, uh, as they know it in the SS process, and then uh, uh, the the solution is generating basically a to be kind of a business use case, uh, and then based on the, those to be use, uh, use cases, uh, you are able to move uh, much quicker forward towards uh, towards build and implementation. We have uh, a lot of other things uh, there, uh, but uh, happy to uh, to deep dive with you on a on a separate session into each and single one. Uh, after you you have uh, built your uh, discovery pipeline, so basically uh, you uh, you're putting uh, now the hat uh, in the in the arms on on your uh, implementation team. So now you expect that uh, the implementation team delivers builds the solution and delivers. Uh, as quick as possible, so you can uh, you can start uh, 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 realizing the value out of it, right? So uh, for that we have the built module, which is uh, uh, in a way uh, inbuilt with a vision to again standardize and to make sure uh, that uh, your implementation project is uh, is going as it should, uh, and that there are no uh, no showstoppers in the way, that you are still on the time and on the budget and you can easily visualize the progress and understand where you are at the moment. On top of that, of course, uh, implementing all the governance flows, uh, you can follow activities uh, and, and so on. Uh, and uh, one more additional thing that uh, we have added there is a code review uh, capability. So uh, as we know today, uh, uh, building a lot of aut automations, it's very important uh, that uh, the code is standardized and then that you can do the code review uh, more or less standardized as well throughout the different domains. So for that, we have uh, the code review capability uh, that uh, is uh, composed of uh, uh, close to 50 different uh, 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 topics uh, for, or, or or you can say uh, uh, rules. And then you have a, a big breakdown uh, of the rules. You have the overall score and so on. So basically it helps uh, to deliver uh, your implementation much much quicker and much uh, in much more stable uh, state. Uh, once uh, once you are done with the implementation, you you de deploy uh, your automations, your uh, models, or uh, depends what technology you're using, and then you are putting it in the hands on, on the on your operational team. So for that, we have the control module, which is uh, you can say the heart of the of the whole application. So this is where the things uh, are happening, right? So this is uh, where you centralize your your view of all your techn underneath technologies, and then uh, you are able to control and operate uh, the technologies. The control module is uh, built on uh, uh, with with a vision uh, that is a cross technology, cross vendor, and multi tenant uh, uh, support uh, on top. So, which means uh, no matter what technology you are on, uh, or if you have multiple vendors from same technology, multiple tenants you can all plug in, uh, plug and play into one single platform, one single view, and then uh, uh, see what's going on and uh, operate uh, from, from, the same, from the same view. Uh, addressing some of the, uh, of the challenges that uh, Alex mentioned earlier uh, are also uh, done in this, uh, in this module. So one of the, um, one of the uh, kind of challenges uh, today is uh, visualization. What's going on, right, with uh, your technology? How they're performing? Uh, are things uh, going uh, how it should be? Are there any uh, breakages? Uh, anything uh, not going uh, as it should? Even when things are going uh, as they should, can I see uh, and, and so on? Uh, then also automation of uh, of uh, of those uh, incidents specifically. So when uh, things are happening all the time, especially when you are uh, growing uh, big 
uh, and uh, uh, for for that we have uh, automation of uh, kind of uh, incidents so you can uh, easily plug and play uh, service now or any other uh, itsm tool uh, and automate the whole uh, flow from uh, when the incidents happen up to the when uh, the incident is follow up and fixed uh, we have uh, uh, built the module on a even on a deeper level where you can, for example, if you go into the RPA uh, a technology specific line, uh, you have a deep uh, deep dive into each of uh, the IPS, uh, RPA specific uh, entities like processes, queues, uh, robots, resources, uh, and so on. And for each of those lines, we have a, a two level, a top level where you see the visibility, what's happening, and then you have a, a, a breakdown level where you can you know, deep dive into the into the specifics. You can see what's working, not working, and then even go to the to the lowest level of uh, of the things uh, that are uh, actually your automations. Right? You can uh, visualize the logs. You can uh, you can go to the uh, to the log level, uh, and uh, additionally to that, we have added a anomaly kind of a, a page. And uh, the the whole purpose with anomaly page is uh, uh, again to others one of the challenges. Uh, that uh, most of the automation project have today, which is um, uh, basically analyzing uh, the errors, right? So uh, if you have hundreds of uh, automations live, it's, uh, it's becoming more and more uh, challenging to analyze which of the errors, because there are errors always, and it will continue happening. But uh, analyzing and paying attention on, on the right error at the right time is the most important one. And this, uh, uh, this uh, specific uh, sub module of uh, of this module that we have built is uh, addressing that uh, that uh, that point so it uh, shows you when and which errors you should actually look at when there are anomalies uh, versus when it's uh, like uh, expected beha behavior of, of your solution uh coming back uh, to to the, to the other uh, so we have uh, on top uh, uh, added this run flow uh, section which is uh, linked uh, to uh, any of your scheduling uh, basically triggering automations uh, on the fly uh, or on a, on a specific time uh, so the run flow section is uh, addressing another uh, challenge uh, that uh, the automation projects are dealing with today which is uh, uh, the schedule orchestration part so in this module uh, you can basically First of all, uh, visualize all your schedules, automations, and uh, on a heat map, you can understand where you have uh, uh, the uh, the kind of uh, the breaking points. Uh, the more darker the, the fields are, uh, it means the, the more heavy that uh, specific day and hour is, uh, and the lighter it is, uh, the less offload it is. So you can optimize first of all from a from a viewpoint perspective, but uh, on top of that. We have a uh, uh, built-in uh, within the tool uh, option that uh, you create uh, your own flows uh, and uh, build some uh, additional uh, or more like specialized way of scheduling that uh, uh, you then hand it over to the platform to operate for you. And uh, what I mean, I have a, a pre-open uh, pre schedule uh, for, for that. So this is how it looks uh, when you create a, a schedule, you have a kind of run flow map that you can build. Uh, and this allows you uh, to basically create uh, not a single uh, only like a, a process, but you can create a whole flow uh, of processes into uh, into uh, um, into one uh, basically trigger. Uh, and uh, this flow can be multi-technology combined. Uh, you can uh, be multi-vendor. So there is no limitations uh, uh, that uh, that you have today by using the vendors only. Uh, from, from a full perspective as well, uh, there are several rules uh, or, or kind of triggers that you can configure, time-based triggers, more like standard triggers that are supported on a, on a, on a flow level. And then we have some uh, dynamic scheduling uh, triggers, also time-based that uh, you can make it this more dynamic without static uh, timing, uh, uh, like a run before or a run between. Uh, then you have event-based triggers where you can trigger uh, where actually the platform is triggering uh, this uh, based on specific events. Uh, in this case, like a queue uh, are uh, coming into a specific uh, a queue. So queue items are coming in a specific queue. 
uh, this can happen anytime during the day or maybe uh, during uh, uh, once during month or several times during the day. So it's not controlled. It's uh, it's impossible to schedule. So it's uh, on the fly. Uh, we have also API based uh, uh, triggering. So possibility that uh, you can uh, trigger these flows outside uh, through APIs, low code applications or whatever you have uh, options uh, and a possibility to, to trigger it, of course, manually. So there are cases as well that you want specific triggers, uh, flows to be triggered only uh, by you on specific points when you want it manually, that you can do it as well. For each uh, for each trigger, uh, there is a, a, a very deep deep dive uh, historical data uh, overview of what's happening. Uh, you can, uh, yeah, you, you have a, a full deep dive into the, uh, the history, even on a specific uh, the flow, where you can go one by one. You can see what's ha what has happened when. If uh, there are errors, you can see what's the error. You can deep dive into the log uh, uh, as such, uh, and, and so on and so on. And uh, one more uh, important thing here that we are addressing is, uh, in a way, uh, uh, a self uh, self recovery of uh, of these processes. And how this self recovery is is done is uh, basically by uh, setting up a rules. We are supporting, uh, as part of the platform, uh, three types of rules. Uh, we have execution rules, we have uh, the uh, recovery rules, uh, and notification rules. Uh, so, uh, so execution rules are basically rules that uh, allow you to control how you execute this process, uh, uh, which um, on which resources, uh, which users can uh, can can do it. Uh, and, and so and so on. Uh, recovery rules are rules that help you to uh, to, to recover from from errors uh, specifically, or uh, from uh, from processes that are uh, stuck somewhere. And notifications are uh, basically uh, alerts in a way. If you want to get alerted for specific point, you you can configure uh, those. So by configuring these uh, these three types on on any of the levels. Uh, you are able to basically also introduce self-recovery uh, on top. Uh, another another uh, basically important point here that we are ad addressing uh, through this run flow is uh, uh, kind of uh, schedule overlaps. So you, you usually in, a, in in real life uh, uh, that uh, like a static scheduling uh, is done once, but uh, as uh, as things go. Uh, resources fail licenses are not enough and so on so usually you get a lot of more unexpected thing than uh, just a simple uh, one-time scheduling so for that the platform actually take care of it and uh, dynamically reallocate uh, resources uh, dynamically plans and runs um, uh, the the schedules and as well raise alerts uh, to you uh, so you are aware when things are not working or when things we uh, will be failing so you can earlier be aware when you should uh, invest more into maybe licensing into more resources and, and so on more capacity in a way so with with this uh, we are also addressing another problem uh, that alex mentioned and this is uh, you can say uh, uh, optimization of your resources and your licenses so the better you optimize resources and licenses uh, the more uh, stability you have uh, in the whole operation and uh, also we have uh, some uh, some parts regarding licenses where you can see uh, full visibility of your license. You can deep dive into in, into each license. You can see uh, what you have, the cost as well per license is available, uh, utilization per license, and and so on. Uh, and uh, uh, with that, I will round up the control uh, and jump uh, quickly to the volume module, which is uh, the last module of the of the five. Uh, but not uh, the least important because this is where uh, where actually a business and your uh, your your management actually uh, will be looking. This this is where you can see how your uh, automations are performing, what is your uh, ROI, uh, KPIs, uh, and so on. So we have uh, the KPI file uh, summary page. You can see statistics, savings, uh, hours saved, money saved per project, per KPI, uh, different views. You can see uh, in a dashboard view, uh, based on estimations, uh, what you have done uh, in your discovery and, and reality. So compare uh, your actuals versus estimate, uh, which is very important uh, to 
uh, for their own streamline your uh, automations, especially from discovery and, and, and so on. Uh, we have also some other visualizations like uh, tracking your pipeline. Uh, so discovery summary tracking, uh, the build pipeline tracking, uh, are you completing project on time, on, off time? And then we have some uh, customized uh, dashboards and self dashboards uh, that uh, you can build on top with, with the data that is available through the automations. So you can build uh, any different kind of uh, uh, customized dashboards with the uh, automation data. And, and then on top, uh, we allow uh, some self dashboarding capabilities, which, uh, which will give you some, some more uh, kind of a flavor to the, uh, to the visualization and what you want to, uh, to see, what is what uh, you, are, you are interested in. Yeah, with that, I will wrap up uh, this, uh, this, de this demo so I can leave some time for, uh, for questions. Thank you, Goran. Uh, that was a that was a great uh, demo. Uh, I like the ex extent of the features and um, also, you know, I, I love the look and feel of your dashboards. Uh, so we have some questions coming in, so we'll start taking them up. Uh, so first question we have is from Brad. Uh, so Brad, do you want to unmute and ask the questions, or do you want me to read it out? All right, let me read it for you. So how, and you can also see it on the chat, um, um, Goran and Alex, uh, how, how would you say production support engineers uh, will be able to leverage the scheduling and control tab for management of deployed solutions? Yeah, uh, so basically uh, the, the control tab, uh, especially uh, the run flow uh, uh, part is there to offload uh, the operational, uh, specifically in, in in the area of uh, of scheduling, right? Managing your automations and running on time, uh, making sure that whenever they run, there is a, a available resource and license, uh, and that you can streamline the, the run times. You can also uh, kind of uh, lower your throughput time, uh, which you cannot uh, do by by manually scheduling things. Uh, additionally to that, uh, you can, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, the production operation guys can easily uh, see what's happening on the platform uh, anytime through actually not on uh, one specific uh, technology, but throughout technologies, right? Uh, and then uh, you can set up uh, uh, alerts, you can set up uh, a lot of uh, kind of uh, self uh, re recovery rules uh, and things uh, that will additionally support and offload your, you know, uh, deep dive analysis that usually people are doing when things are not working on the platforms. Okay. Uh, do you know Salonis execution management system, EMS? He has a question about that too. He says, how would they say, how would they say ID exception? Oh, sorry. Do the three types of rules supported enable automated handling of scenarios similar to Salonis EMS? I don't uh, know the Salonis EMS specifically, so yeah, I cannot really comment mm. versus that one. Okay. Uh, how would they say ID exception and what degree of control might they have to initiate an action on that platform or notify escalate issues if needed? Exceptions uh, in, in a sense of uh, uh, as, uh, that uh, they're, they're coming uh, as they go or uh, exceptions yeah. exceptions in the sense of in that control platform if mm -hmm. i have a production engineer who mm -hmm. I, identifies uh you know one of those various rules and they want to take an action um either themselves uh if it's a specific sla or if they determine that they need to escalate an issue would that mm -hmm. be something that they're able to do from that control module uh, well, uh, from the control module, uh, you you can uh, actually plug and play and connect a lot of other supporting systems. Uh, I, I mentioned only ServiceNow S1 uh, that you can automate uh, basically uh, incident creation from the exception directly. So uh, basically, you don't need uh, any uh, um, any of your operational guys to to uh, to sit and look when things are happening, but uh, it will happen automatically, and then the team that should take uh, care of it will actually get uh, get this. Uh, a, in uh, more or less real time, uh, but uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And this the question that I had about the Salonis uh, mm -hmm. EMS system. They have uh, rules that are that you can build into that so that without human intervention. Uh, the, the underlying system will take an action if a particular exception, for example, appears, um, you can take an action on how that's handled. It can, it can be, you know, a direct notification, you know, for okay. say a ticketing system. Uh, if it is a, if it's something that's not been encountered before, it can reassign that uh, to a human team member for their review. Things like that is, is what the exception okay. rules. That I was referring mm -hmm. okay yeah, yeah. I, I, got, I got you now so basically uh, that is not something that we support right at the moment uh, but that's something that uh, is in our pipeline uh, basically the whole control module uh, is uh, is uh, AI uh, backed up so we are building a, a whole uh, AI engine underneath uh, the module that will make it uh, smarter uh, and uh, part of that smartness will be uh, this this kind of uh, rules where you uh, where basically users will be able to uh, set certain rules and then with the time as well train their models based on their uh, own behavior, right? So uh, uh, as, uh, as the motto and, uh, and the goal for, for the whole uh, uh, platform is uh, to make the organizational, uh, the, any organizational self-driving, uh, we need, uh, we are building this uh, AI module to uh, accomplish that, that part. So it will come, we don't have the support at the moment. All right. Uh... Thanks, Brad. Uh, so we have some more questions. I think uh, easy question from Dinesh. Uh, how can we integrate UiPath or Blue Prism to Turbotic? Yeah, uh, so I will uh, jump to the, uh, basically the, uh, the, the uh, administration portal. So the platform is built on from, from two layers. One is the layer that I was showing you with the uh, with, uh, five uh, modules. Uh, and then we have a uh, uh, administration specific uh, uh, layer which is uh, used uh, to, to set up all the integrations, connections uh, um, in a uh, in few clicks. So basically this is uh, where you, you choose the vendor. Uh, you choose, for example, for Blue, uh, Blue Prism, uh, you go, you, you put the data details uh, that are required and you connect. S similar with the UiPath, uh, we connect uh, to the orchestrator, uh, you put the credentials you, uh, uh, and then you are up and running. So. Uh, the platform is actually using uh, API-based approach uh, for most of the vendors and for some that uh, don't support API, like uh, the older version uh, of Blue Prism, uh, we are also using uh, database connections. Oh, excellent. Excellent. And that seems very easy. All right. So Frank has a question. In the control module, when you start a process slash bot, how do you control what VDI or machine and user logged in is being used? Yeah, that, that 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 all that is controlled through uh, through the through the rules that I that I mentioned. <clears throat> so basically, uh, you have a, a three levels to uh, to put uh, this this control on. One is on the on the process level. Uh, so if I uh, if I open, for example, one of the processes, we have the run rules. Yeah, please go on. Uh, okay, I'm not able to see. Yeah, so this is basically uh, the the control. So you you configuring the rules. Uh, you can set a, a global global rule that can apply to all your uh, processes uh, automations. You can configure a specific process rule, or you can configure a flow specific uh, rule. So three levels of configuration, and then you have a uh, allowing the nine con resource. You can uh, also set up a reassigning on specific resources based on the duration. So if uh, some resource went down, you can reassign to another group of resources and so on. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Frank, for the question. Craig Nic Nicholson, uh, he says, for those organizations that have truly embraced intelligent automation and it has become part of their core transformational initiatives, how does Turbotic feel their platform can best support these organizations with Turbotic? Alex, maybe for you? Yeah, yeah, sure. No, I think that's a great question. And that is, uh, I think that that kind of customer is very much the end to end customer because they have, uh, they are working uh, with all of these aspects at scale. So they can use the idea module to, uh, to e engage the business even more and get even more ideas. They, they use the discovery module to get all the data in one place. 
and, and to be able to drive reuse. And they use the build module to keep track of all the projects uh, and to do the projects uh, faster and cheaper with the code review and other things. They use controls, so then they add all their vendors in there and they can show all the vendors uh, in one place and optimize that with the, with the AI features. And uh, they can also create these different dashboards based on access control for different stakeholder groups. So they can provide the finance team with the finance bots and the solutions and the projects and the HR team with the, with the information about those. And they, they do all of that in real time. So they don't need to sit and do a lot of PowerPoints and reporting uh, on the side, but basically digitize the whole uh, initiative in one place with the, with the access control for everybody who needs that. Yeah, a self-driving enterprise, right? That's the term I forgot when I was in. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the vision, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah. I, I, I love that vision. All right, so let's go to the next one. Uh, code reviews. Do you do code reviews, guys? Goran, is that included? It, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, as, a, as part of the build module, we have a code review. Um, okay, so Frank section. is asking how do Turbotic do code reviews, static, dynamic, or users who code review each other's code? Basically, this is a, a dynamic uh, code review, so it's an automated one where you provide uh, the, the XML package or, or the zip file, uh, and then once you provide it, you set up, uh, you choose your rules you would like to code review. You can predefine okay. these rules uh, to standardize or not, and then once you set this up, you send it for processing, and then usually it's uh, up to a minute uh, until you get the, the results. You get the score, you get the, uh, together with the score, you get also uh, where the score is low, you get the uh, observations and uh, some details about uh, how you can uh, fix uh, the, the issues. All right, so Which six more minutes. So let's uh, speed it up. We have four more questions. I uh, think Alex, what's the selling business model from Sergey? Uh, yeah, okay, uh, good. So uh, uh, in the, on the pricing, I so saw there's another one on pricing. So we price this based on two aspects. One is how many users you have. Uh, and then how many processes you connect to the control. So this also depends on what, what parts of the product you want to use. If you want to use the whole product end-to-end, -end, it's users and processes. If you only want to use the control module, for instance, because you're mostly interested in, in operations, well, then you will not have, have so many users maybe, but you have a lot of processes. If you're more looking at the project side, the discovery build, then you might have more users. Um, because your teams are working, uh, working there. So you pay per user and you pay per, uh, per process. But we're we're also looking at uh, ways to, uh, to 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 find the right model for the right uh, uh, for the right uh, customers. Would say. Okay. Thank you, Alex. Uh, and uh, Tunji is also asking. Apart from pricing, uh, is training provided included for partners? For partners, yeah, yeah, definitely. We have a partner program. Uh, that is up and running and there we provide training to to the partners so definitely so you're interested just you know feel free to send me an email perfect and of course for customers too we we provide training so that they can operate the, the product yeah. themselves yeah 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 and i've gone through one of that so thank you yeah it's great um so uh homan is asking any competitors for turbotic and he's asking me so let me address that and if you guys have any thoughts you can also add and so uh turbotic is uh you know in a space of its own it's basically uh it's like you know self-driving enterprise it's a big vision right uh so but you know from just from an operations perspective maybe rpa supervisor uh, Roboyo has got a tool uh, and, you know, I recently got to know Accenture also as a tool. So there are a few from the consulting companies uh, and, you know, there are some upcoming competitors too, you know, uh, so, uh, and, you know, yeah, join our club, you know, we have people who are, <laughs> uh, who has more experience and building those things and in using these things and applying these things. But yeah, any, any other thoughts, Alex, quickly? Uh, on, comp on competition, I think uh, it's a fairly a new category right. um, i think what from what i've seen we are the only one who providing an end-to-end -end platform with with the whole life cycle and then we have competitors for maybe individual modules but yeah. from what we have seen at least uh if you want end-to-end -end, we, we are the only one at the moment thank you yeah, our biggest competitors you can say today are the homegrown solutions yeah, that, home uh, solution. the big customer yeah. has built it yeah, yeah but those are you. basically long-term very hard to maintain or 
like costly. Mm. So, yeah. All right, Goran, one more question. Initialize, industrialize, institutionalize. Among the above phases, where do you think Turbotic can start its journey to get into right shoes, Sriram? Initialize, maybe right? I can take that one. Yeah, Alex, yeah, uh, go we, ahead. We have, I think we have, we have interesting customers in all this. Ah, yeah. We have one customer who started with automation and then they started with, with uh, robotic and one of the RPA tools from day one. So they got everything digitized from day one. And then we industrialized. That's a very common one. We have the companies that have 50 or maybe 100 bots and maybe they're looking at adding a second vendor maybe. Uh, and they're starting to get into some, some issues and problems scaling. So that, that's, I think, an ideal customer. But then we also have these very big ones who have like can have thousands of, of bots they they have i would say in, for them they have built something homegrown because they have the problem and there hasn't been a market to uh, to solve that problem so they have started to build something homegrown uh, but now they can build something off the shelf then and get the cost down significantly so i think it, right. it works for all all of these kind of uh, categories all right, two more minutes. So last question, uh, and I think uh, Alex, you can you know take your slides at this point. You know, it asks about a trial version. So I think you have something to share. Uh, yeah, trial yeah, version sure. and then there, something there was, to share. Uh, please let me um, let me share. See if I can find it. Here we go. Stop the share. Um, okay. I could. Uh, could just tell that we had this 2.0 release that was happening now, which is basically adding what we call automated operations. Uh, and the features that you can see are automated and dynamic scheduling, self-recovery of processes, automatic and SLA-based notifications, AI-based uh, anom anomaly detection to the product that already existed, so to say, with the, which is a multi-vendor end-to-end management with the whole end-to-end uh, -end flow, idea, discover, build, control, and value, and with the integrations to a number of the different leading vendors uh, uh, in, in the market. So, and we get a lot of questions now, how can you, how can you uh, try this out? So we wanted together with Nandan then uh, do a bit of a launch offer for, for this uh, uh, webinar, where we are then offering uh, anyone who wants to try for, uh, three months, a uh, a whole project plus support. So basically what we do then is to train 10 users where we add 20 projects and we connect up up to 100 uh, processes of any of these vendors into your, uh, into this control room where we after a while can provide this x-ray analysis of, uh, of your operations then. And based on that, you can also on top of the dashboards that are, that are coming out of the box, you can choose two of your own dashboards that are you know, most relevant for, for you. And, and we get them built uh, in a custom way, so to say. And then of course, installation and support. So yeah, if you're interested in this, yeah, feel free to, uh, uh, to, to reach out and uh, we can look at that. And otherwise, of course, if you want to continue the discussion, feel free to reach out to, uh, to me as well. Perfect. Thanks, Alex. Uh, so we have a few more questions. So we are at, uh, you know, a bit about time, but uh, we can stay on and address it. Uh, Alex, if, Gordon, if you guys are available. Are you guys okay? All right. Uh, yes, idea and discovery. How does your platform compare to the task and process mining tools that do all this automatically? Homan. Yeah, I was just actually answering this one because you said we were closing. <laughs> but yeah, I will say it. Uh, yeah, I will say it loud. Uh, so basically, we are not uh, doing any task or process mining, but uh, 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 we are uh, actually plugging in uh, the outputs from those kind of tools and then additionally streamlining the outputs so that you can have everything centralized again, standardized within your organization, and then you can follow up uh, uh, once you're live with the value. Yeah, and I like that approach. You know, you're not duplicating anything. You know, use the best of breed and then use uh, exactly. Turbotic to orchestrate it. That's great. What is the basic pricing for all modules to fit, <laughs> Dinesh? But I don't know if uh, you want to, uh, Alex, you want to share anything on that? Um, I'm happy to share that with, with you, Dinesh, uh, okay. uh, in, in, in person, uh, if, if you reach out, so to say. Uh, then, that, then we have this launch offer here as well that you can... Uh, uh, can work with but we we want to if you if you are small if you don't have, have much we think it should be very easy to start with a very low cost 
Uh, of course, if you have thousands of bots, that's a bigger <laughs> that's a bigger implementation. And and uh, but we want to create you know a lot a lot of business value so that uh, the price can then be justified for it. But uh, easy to start and then pay as you grow. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Goran. I think that's all the questions we have. So thank you so much. It was a great session from, from you gentlemen today. Uh, some of you guys asking, uh, some of you guys asking where you can find the recording. So I have put the YouTube channel. So I'll put the recording out there. And if you signed up for this session, uh, I'll send you an email as well, follow up email with the session recording so that you have it. And so before we go, Alex, Goran, if you want to share anything with the people uh, and 90 of them had signed up and I know many of them would uh, watch the recording send it to me and I will include it in the email when I send out so yeah I, I will do that and uh, actually Nandan I wanted to share a, 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 a poll we did together you and me where we asked the number of experts on you know what are the biggest problem in automation operations and I think we got really good uh, good data. So we have some data points what people think are the biggest problems, and we've got some data points on what people think are the, uh, you know, most needed features to solve this uh, problem. And now with this release, we have like actually uh, built most of these these features. But I, I will share this in the slide pack that is uh, submitted then by by Nandan after the uh, the session. Okay, thank you. Very good. Thank you so much. Uh, so Tunij, Tunji, uh, I now still want to ask about trial, trial licenses. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if they she dropped or he dropped. Uh, he's there. So uh, trial licenses, I as I understand, there uh, you know it it is restricted. They reach out to you for 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 any trial, right? Yeah. Yes. Exactly. We, we unfortunately right now we don't have anything where you can just download and uh, mm -hmm. and and trial. And maybe we will work on. On that, but right now we, you'll you'll have to reach out to me, uh, Chunji, and I'm happy to discuss uh, uh, that with you. Great, great, great. And on that note, a lot of uh, uh, interest in Turbotics. So thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, it was great having you guys, uh, as well as everyone who joined. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Uh, have a good evening wherever you are. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank and thanks, uh, Nandan, for organizing. No problem. Great to have you. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.